We're going to go over the finished goods inventory page. Um, if you've watched the video for the raw materials or know how to work with those, this is pretty much the same. Um, only for finished goods, you'll generally be subtracting from finished goods rather than adding to them um, since you produce finished goods in your production runs and then you'd be shipping them out um, to your customers, to retailers, to distributors, um, and that's kind of the main manual interaction you'd have. Um, but of course you can also add to finished goods, you can reset finished goods if you're doing a, a physical account, you can view all your finished good history, um, kind of different, I'll tell you the date, who, who made the update, whether it was a production run or an add or subtract transaction, who it was sent to, all that good stuff. And just like with raw materials, you can view a snapshot as well. That'll tell you how much you had of each product on a specific date. Um, so how many packages, what it was worth based on your costs, and you can dig deeper and look at the full history of, uh, of each finished good. Um, you can view that history by clicking on the, the name of the product or the, the date as well. And since we're keeping a perpetual inventory on Recipal, um, it'll keep track of every transaction. So production runs, additions, subtractions, resets. It'll keep track of the lock code if you input that, how much changed, who is um, responsible for that transaction, and so on. And again, you'll see open lot codes available. Um, you can click in to update those, see more details. Um, so if we know we actually had 11 packages of this specific lot code, we can update that. If one of these is actually done and we don't want to be pulling from those, you can update that there as well. Um, that's how you'd work from there. Um, you can filter by tags. So um, you can set your tags on your recipe dashboard um, looks like we don't have any tags, but say we want to um, add a nuts tag to our peanut butter cookies. Uh, we can reset that page there. Now we can filter by nuts and we'll pull our peanut butter cookies. So that's where we'd add tags on the recipe dashboard. Um, can reset the filter there. Um, but say we're sending out 10 packages of our chocolate chip cookies. We can see what available lock codes we have looks like this 15818 is the oldest one. Um, so we can pick that and it'll auto complete it. Um, and for just setting out that one, we can put in any notes if we if we want, but generally don't have to. We'll kind of know what it is, what, what data was shipped out, if it was different from today, um, who's receiving it, who's transporting it. We can add new receivers and transporters here uh, by following this link and we'll subtract from finished goods like that. So we went from 39 to 29 packages. Um, we have a note that uh, we updated one finished good. We can undo it if it was a mistake, um, but that'll get tracked as well in our perpetual log. Uh, we'll have that lot code. We'll be able to search it in lot tracing. Um, and that's pretty much it for finished goods. Um, if you have any questions, give us a call, um, email us, chat us, um, and thanks again for watching. Hope you have a great rest of the day.